Hey y'all, welcome to my WWE Smackdown Shut Your Mouth Let's Play Part 21 where we're actually going to talk some wrestling. Yeah, I'm done ranting, I'm done talking about TV, I'm done talking about Dragon Ball Z. We're actually going to talk about what's going on here. And you know, I don't have a match. How amazing is that? I actually alluded to this in an earlier part, but... This... This whole month of October, I think I only had like three matches. Like, I didn't have... I don't have matches for the t first two weeks at least. I might not have one in the third, I can't quite remember. But for the first two, no matches. And we'll see why that is soon. Because we're starting into a war here, and you know, we're starting into No Mercy. That's the pay-per-view for October, I think. Can't quite remember on that. We'll find out in part uh, 22. <laughs> But anyway, Flair stole Bubba from SmackDown, so the thing here is I'm going to steal someone from Raw. I get three choices, and we're going to see who they are. At this point in time, I'm still playing a good guy. I mean, it was looking like I was going to turn heel there, a little bit on heat, but then the Stacey Keebler thing came up, and I became the good guy. However, I believe around No Mercy I've been thinking of turning bad. But we'll get more in, or not no mercy, no way out. Anyway, Vince has brought in his own backup here, Stephanie McMahon. How is Flair going to react to that? We'll learn in a couple weeks. It's a big thing, and I'll... You'll find out. You'll find out. Anyway, he's, like I said, he's going to tell me to go recruit someone from the other team. And it's like, okay, I can do that. Because at this point, I'm not too happy with Flair either. So I get put in the locker room and I get my choice of three guys. I got Gold Dust there, looks like Billy Gunn over there, and Eddie Guerrero. Well, the guy I pick is Eddie Guerrero. Now, I think, now you get to ask him a series of questions, and if you uh, answer some of these wrong, or if you ask some of them wrong. <laughs> Are you here to start something? Exactly! No, I need your help. But if you answer any of them wrong, I think that he can ignore you and not join you. <laughs> Why me? No particular reason. Uh, we could be tag team partners, and I'm going to remember that for later on. I mean, I've got some potential tag, I got a potential tag team partner already in Booker T. But if it comes down to it, maybe me and Eddie Guerrero will have to be, be a tag team. And he basically just says he'll think about it, and uh, I think that's it for the week, actually. Yeah, I don't even have a match. That's it. I don't even get to walk around backstage. Week 2 is very similar to that. Week 3, on the other hand, I think that's when I actually get onto a match here. But yeah, week 1, already done. I'm, I'm not even three and a half minutes in. Now I am, but I wasn't three and a half minutes in when week one was finished. Again, no match. This is all just talking to Eddie, talking to Vince, you know, getting the recruiting thing out of the way. Uh, there's not much else to say about that. So let's talk the world of wrestling. What's going on right now? Well, it's been a while. It's been a couple weeks since I last uh, talked about anything, so let's go back to the the week in Chicago. March 3rd. The Chicago crowd, they are uh, a rambunctious bunch, and I'm not i am not really a big fan of the Chicago crowd, mostly because of their fanboyism for CM Punk. And I do mean fanboyism. Like, uh, it's okay to cheer for Punk, especially in their hometown. What I don't like is how they instantly turn on anyone else who was in the ring. It doesn't matter if they were cheering them beforehand. As soon as Punk comes out, the other guy gets booed to shit. Why can't you both cheer them? Like, just cheer louder for Punk. But anyway, the show was pretty good, actually. As far as I remember. And I mean, we had our Daniel Bryan segment. Oh, the Daniel Bryan segment with the authority. I remember there were so many losers online who were, who were saying things like, Oh, ha, ha, they're working the crowd so good. No, they're not. They're not. 
Triple H is a good heel, but he's not that good. Sh the Chicago crowd, they were just shitting on them because they weren't Daniel Bryan. That's it. Anyway, at the end of that video there, Trish Stratus came in, and I will admit, I almost picked her. I almost pick her over Eddie Guerrero. It was tempting. I'm just like, hmm, hot Canadian supermodel, supermodel or Latino legend. Oh, it's a tough choice. Actually, I'm not sure if I have a match in week three either. It might not be till week four that I have that match. No, don't go away. But, uh, yeah, there's a lot of loser wrestling fans out there, and I mean, they're all online, and I don't mean the guys who complain all the time, because, you know, there are very few of them, actually. Most most of the time, the complaining comes from different people. Like, the place that I belong to, the forum that I belong to, there's 10,000 members. You can't please all of them. No, that's impossible. Everyone who says, oh, it's the internet wrestling community flip-flopping again, it's not, you dumbasses. It's not! It's 10,000 people having 10,000 different opinions! I mean, I know you guys have the brain the size of a walnut, but still! I mean, why can't you just be like me and just like what you like and not like what you don't like? Why do you have to make yourself seem superior to everyone on there? Like, I'll act like an asshole in other things, but it's fucking professional wrestling. You don't have to be that serious for prof with professional wrestling. Myself, personally, I prefer the wrestling aspect. I'm not so much of the s on the soap opera thing. And that's why I really like it today. I mean, I don't think 2014's been their best year. I still really enjoy 20... pretty much 2010 through 2012. I think those were really good years, and... 2010 till halfway through 2013. We'll say that. Then it started getting a little awkward, although the increase in wrestling was really good. I was uh, not so keen on seeing a lot of shit like Alberto Del Rio. You know, I don't like him, and I'm not too big on the Wyatt family. Just because, you know, I like wrestling, and I think those guys are crappy wrestlers. <laughs> what are you going to do, though? I mean... You just make them out to look like the idiots that they are. I've been fairly good at that. Fairly good at that. There are people who uh, have been able to call me out a few times. And, you know, if you ever watch this, Slappy, call out to you. You are one of the uh, most intense people I've seen on the forum and one of the most uh, strongly opinionated. But you really stick to your guns. And, I mean, you know the shit you're talking about. You know how to tell everyone else that they're fucking wrong. I'm sure he's not actually watching this, though. Because <laughs> he doesn't seem like much of a gamer guy, and you, let's not even talk about that anymore. No more talking about people that no one else knows about. <laughs> anyway, looks like me and Eddie are working together here. And um, something I didn't mention, but this month, for October, I changed my look a little bit. I mean, I still have my... Uh, holy shit, that was not supposed to jump like that, I don't think. Maybe it was. Maybe it wasn't. I can't remember. But, uh... Anyway, as I was saying... I probably cut something out there that I didn't mean to. Sorry, guys, if I did. I Okay, I'm still in the third week. I, I must have a match now. It, I'm probably teaming up with Eddie. Okay, I don't think we missed anything. It's going to be me taking on the two guys that I didn't pick. Which makes sense, you know. Like I said, I was changing my appearance there a bit, and, uh, like, I didn't change the tights, actually, but, uh, I gave myself a little bit of stubble, which looks kind of awful, and I changed my wrist tape to, uh, completely taped up hands. I'm not sure if by this point I've changed my finisher or not yet. I haven't really been paying too much attention to that. If I've been using the spinning toe hold, then yes, I have changed my finisher. If I haven't been using the spinning toe hold, I haven't changed it yet. I'm starting to lose my voice, so uh, I think that's going to be... Oh, i got to do part 22 after this. <sighs> I don't want to, though. Let's go back to talking about wrestling. 
Yeah, I'm whining a little bit, but you know, it's. I think it's fair to whine about when your throat hurts. It's like it's fair to whine about if your arm hurts or I cut my foot off. Yeah, you can cry about that if you want. <laughs> In fact, you probably should be yelling for help. I know I would be if I cut my foot off. That'd be awful. Oh boy, what am I even talking about anymore? <sighs> Me and Latino Heat teaming up to take on Billy and Gold Dust. But you know, I don't think I've talked about any of these guys yet. Maybe I was... No, I haven't even talked about Billy Gunn yet. So, uh... Let's start with Eddie Guerrero. Yes, he is dead. He died in 2005. I believe it was 2005, anyway. I think it was. Yeah, it wouldn't have been 2004. It was definitely 05. But he is one of the greatest Latino wrestlers out there. The Guerrero family is one of the biggest names... It's the biggest families in wrestling. I mean, you can talk about the Von Eriks. You can talk about... Well, the Hearts are in a different level, but... The Guerreros are up there too, you know. And I mean, they've wrestled all over the world, in Mexico, and Japan, and the USA. And they made a big name for themselves. Now you got, like, Chavo Classic and Eddie Guerrero are probably the biggest names of the bunch. Especially Eddie, because he got such mainstream exposure through WCW and WWE. Chavo Jr. is a little bit in there, but not the same extent. I wasn't as big of a fan of Chavo. I mean, there's nothing wrong with him. He was just boring. Eddie was much more entertaining. The whole lie, cheat, and steal shit, that was it's always hilarious. I remember fondly. One of my favorite moments of his was, uh, of mine with him. I can't remember if he was in the match or not, but it was Big Show against either Eddie or someone else. And at one point, Eddie's on the outside, and you know, one of his biggest things is to frame an opponent with a foreign object, usually a chair. He will, while the referee is down, he'll get a chair, throw it to his opponent, his opponent will catch it, and then he'll just drop down to the ground while the referee's getting up, thus tricking the referee. That's all, that's one of his trademark things, but one of my favorite moments, and this was in the Big Show matches I was talking about, at one point, Eddie Guerrero <laughs> stuffed a screwdriver in the Big Show's boot. So the Big Show is feeling it, and he's trying to get it, get pull the screwdriver out, the referee just walks over. And it's like, well, I didn't put that in there, I'm just trying to get it out of my boot. And it's like, oh, Eddie, you rascal, you. Another one. In tag team wrestling, you have to hold this little white tag rope. To, and you have to stay in, and that means that you're staying in your corner. You're not, like, uh, wandering all around the ring apron and beating up your opponents. Well... Eddie took advantage of this by untying the ring rope from the turnbuckle and tying the little white rope to the rope itself. And then he started walking down the apron while still holding the rope. And he even told the referee, I'm still holding the rope. What are you going to do? And it's like, the guy, the guy was hilarious. He was a master of his craft. He was just great. And it was very sad that he died. But you know, steroids and drugs, that caused his enlarged heart. And that's how it happened. I mean, and that's how it happens a lot in the wrestling business. It's always something that isn't natural causes, most of the time. I mean, like, Mad Dog Vachon, he uh, died recently of standard causes. And Billy Robinson. Billy Robinson, if you don't know who he is, is um he was a big name wrestler in the 70s and 80s. Mostly the 70s. But, uh, my first exposure to him was through the Kanikuman manga. And yeah, I know I wasn't going to talk about this shit anymore, but, you know, Kanikuman is a, uh... It's a bit of a special exception, because it is a wrestling-based manga. It basically takes wrestling, makes it super serious, and makes the competitors superhuman. It sound It's as awesome as it sounds. It is. And... Some of the characters on there were based off of actual wrestlers who were wrestling in Japan at the time. Some of the most uh, notable ones, or the most notable one is Terry Man, who is based clearly off of Terry Funk. And Terry Funk is one of my favorite wrestlers. I think he's incredibly underrated if you're not talking about his hardcore days. 
But if you're talking about his hardcore days, he's completely overrated, if you ask me. So he's he's kind of a mixed bag there. But there was also a character named Robin Mask. And he was based off of Billy Robinson. And that's how I got into looking at Billy Robinson. I'm like, hey, this is pretty awesome because, you know, he's a shooter. And shoot-style wrestling is arguably my favorite style of wrestling. I like brawling too, but shoot-style shoot and brawling, my favorite two styles of wrestling. And, you know, shoot style makes sense because, you know, I live in Calgary and, you know, that's exactly what the hearts do, or what the hearts did. So I was kind of sad to hear that he passed away, and that was um, either the day before or the day of the March 3rd Raw that I was talking about earlier. Anyway, back to the match. Let's talk about Goldust a little bit. He's recently come back. I think I've talked about Goldust a little bit already, but he recently came back to the WWE, and he is on the best run of his life. Like, I think I was saying this earlier, but these older guys, they have to step it up to keep up with the younger talent, and Goldust has done a hell of a job doing that. Billy Gunn has too. Like, Billy Gunn is 50 years old right now, and aside from a very bad hairline, he looks great for his age. Like, holy crap! I mean, I... I know... I've seen people in their 40s who don't look as good as Billy Gunn. So it's pretty great to see that he's 10, year old, 10 years older than some people and he looks great. Anyway, uh, yeah, there's a spinning toe hold. I'm, still, I'm starting to use that now, I guess. Uh, but as you can see, it didn't make him tap out. I will probably need to lock it in again. But yeah, the Billy Gunn returned recently too with uh, Road Dog as the New Age Outlaws. They got a tag team run and the Usos won the belts from them, which I am all for. I love the Usos. They are my favorite tag team right now. Rikishi's sons, if you didn't know. And they are very entertaining. How long is it going to be until the WWE just has to split them up? They're twins! Come on! They don't need to be split up. I mean, I think that's one of the... I try not to criticize WWE too much, but splitting up tag teams is usually a really bad idea. It really doesn't go anywhere too often. Like, uh... Sure, it worked with Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty. Splitting up the Rockers, it, uh... let Michaels explode in popularity. Flatten the ref there. But at the same time, Michaels became, he let it all go to his head, he became drug addicted, he became a giant prick. And I've been through all that before. Another tag team that split up and really helped them, John Morrison and The Miz. And, like, The Miz was WWE Champion. John Morrison, he came very close to be WWE, cha WWE Champion. But then we have some failed experiments, like Crime Time. And it looks like the primetime players are going that way. And it looks like... And the Heart Dynasty went that way. And don't split up tag teams that don't need it. I mean, then you're just trying to build back your tag team division. And, you know, that's a problem too. I mean, I don't mind it so much if the tag team is just thrown together to begin with. Like Cody Rhodes and Damian Sandow. And I mean, by thrown together, they haven't transcended being thrown together like the New Age Outlaws or the Primetime Players did. Damian Sandow and Cody Rhodes, that was a very awful tag team. Almost as awful as Drew McIntyre and Cody Rhodes. I didn't. I just didn't see how people really liked this uh, Cody Rhodes, Damian Sandow tag team. I mean, I love Cody Rhodes. I think he is one of the best guys on the roster today. He is my second favorite next to Sheamus. I just ran into the steel steps. That had to hurt. <laughs> but Damien Sandow. Like, Eddie, what are you doing? <laughs> I don't even remember that. I don't remember him jumping out like that. Oh, here we go. Gory Neckbreaker. I think that's a Gory Neckbreaker. I wish we would just hit a finisher here. I'm sure he's dizzy and I'm sure he's sick. And I wish you wouldn't pin him over there. Yeah, that's the thing. Though I only have a few matches for these parts, they are long matches. Oh. And it's because they're tag team matches. I really don't like the way tag team matches worked in the early games because the opponents would just come running in all the time and break up the pins. 
Um, it wasn't so bad in the games after Shut Your Mouth, but it was still bad. It's definitely better now. And that's something that I can definitely give props to in the uh, newer games. Because, you know, for the most part, the newer games, they do play a whole lot better than the old ones. And I know people just uh, can't accept that. <laughs> no Mercy is the best wrestling game ever. No Mercy sucks. Uh, I really don't like the N64 wrestling games. They're so clunky and they're so convoluted. I mean, I think the controls in Shut Your Mouth are convoluted, but that's nothing compared to what they are in the No Mercy game and Attitude and WrestleMania 2000, all those other N64 games. I really just don't like them. I really don't think they started to hit their stride till they uh, got onto the uh, PS2 and the GameCube. Day of Reckoning looks really fun. I've never played it, but I've always wanted to. Anyway, Goldust and Billy Gunn are beaten. Me and Eddie, we are on our way to victory. We are going to win at this next pay-per-view. And I was going to record the next, or er, voice over the next part now, but my throat's getting really scratchy and I don't have a bottle of water nearby, so I got enough done for today. I will see you guys when I get to part 22. Uh, yeah.